He, another guy that we want to talk about, um, you know, shout fellow Canadian is Lugens Dort, Lou Dort himself, shout Montreal, shout Quebec. Um, he's averaging right now 14 points a game, shooting 40.2% from the field. Exact, not exactly great, but he is shooting 34.6% from three on 6.2 attempts, right? So he is averaging uh, a league average rate from three, but he is taking 6.2 attempts a game, which is a pretty significant amount. Now, the biggest thing for Lou, for Lou Dort is the fact that he wasn't even playing last NBA season, if you guys remember. Like, he wasn't even playing last NBA season. He pretty much started playing real minutes in the bubble, right? Yeah. So he wasn't even playing last season. And for him to go from a guy that didn't even play um, in the NBA last season to now one of the league's youngest and brightest players shows a lot about him and his work ethic. Now, the main thing about him is that he's always been great on the defensive end. And he showed that in the bubble last year, right? And in the playoffs, his work on James Harden, his work on other guys, um, his perimeter defense is top notch already as a second year player. Pretty much he's, he's pretty much a rookie. Right. Let's call it what it is. He's pretty much a rookie right now. Um, and his defensive game is already top notch. His ability to guard multiple positions on the floor, to run around on the perimeter, to even body up bigger guys. I, you know, my comparison for him is similar, I guess, to PJ Tucker, where PJ Tucker kind of plays more like a big man. But Lou Dor and PJ Tucker are kind of the same mold of player, right? Both are, I think, six four. Well, I think Lou Dor is like six three, six four. Yeah. Um, PJ Tucker is six five, so a bit taller than Lou Dor. But both are pretty much fire hydrant bricks, right? Like they're massive. They're they're very very strong, and you can't push them around unless Lou Dor flops, which he kind of has a tendency to do. Um, but Lou Dor, his defensive game is already top notch in the league. Then you flip things over to his offensive side of the ball, and if you guys remember last year. In the bubble, especially in the playoffs, there was that whole written rule about leave Lou Dort open every single game. Let him shoot the ball as many times as he wants. And fla uh, flash forward to this season, he has a offensive game now. You can't just leave him open from three anymore. For him to go from a guy that was constantly disrespected um, on the offensive side of the ball, similar to a guy like Andre Roberson, and, you know, for, for defenses to say, like, let him shoot the ball completely. And for him to now be shooting at a pretty much league-wide average on 6.2 attempts per game is very impressive. And then you talk about the two other two levels of scoring where he's being able to get into the mid-range, especially even more get to the rim. He had shown flashes of being a great cutter last season, and now he's expanded upon it even more to the point now where he has a legitimate offensive game. As I talked about, he dropped 42 points earlier in the season against the Raptors. So for him to go from a guy that wasn't even playing in the NBA, got a chance in the bubble and in the playoffs, and was constantly disrespected on the offensive side of the ball, to go from that to a guy now that has a legitimate offensive game and is one of the youngest and brightest stars in the league today, shows a lot um, about Lou Dort's improvement and his work ethic to be great. And I think he has a lot of potential moving forward for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah, this is just another example of the Oklahoma City scouting department doing a fantastic job just finding diamond in the rough players, man. Like, and again, like Moses Brown, yeah, Shout Moses Brown, Moses Brown, another guy who they found. I think Lou Dort. I've, I've always paid attention to Lou Dort because my co one of my coworkers loves his game, um, and uh, he he's a he's a big Lou Dort fan, and I think, and it's for good reason. I mean, like I think, I, especially you know the type of guy my coworker actually is. He's a guy who. Appreciate the guy who has some heart, who plays with heart and plays with effort on the court. And Lou Dort is definitely one of those guys. You know, he, you know, uh, PJ Tucker is actually a great comparison in the sense that the the builds are very similar. The type of defensive mentality is very sim similar where they can guard anybody. They don't care. They'll guard anyone. They'll play you tough. You're not going to push a guy like that around. Uh, when when the last time <laughs> Oklahoma City played the Raptors, uh, I just see him going at Boucher every time and just knocking Boucher like five feet, yeah. you know? Because the guy, the guy's strong. The guy's tough. And now that you're seeing uh, him develop that offensive game, he's he's a very good player, man. Like he's he's somebody who, again, with more development, with more time, you know, again, like he could be very good. Him and Shea Gilgis Alexander are a very good one-two tandem for the Oklahoma City Thunder. 
And it was honestly done by accident. Oklahoma City didn't really mean to do that. They knew about Shea, but they didn't mean about to have Lou Dort to be this great. And now you're seeing how, how good he is. And he's very valuable in today's game because, again, everyone's looking for the sought after the 3 and D type of players, the players that can shoot the ball, but guard multiple positions and be effective in that type of realm. And Lou Dort is definitely one of those type of players, man. And he's he's been great this season, man. Like Again, like people are going to argue that, hey, you're choosing a guy who's, who's basically a second year or a rookie player. But man, if you look at his improvement in terms of the game that we saw in the bubble versus now, I think that's what we're really focusing on is just the work ethic to improve your game basically like tenfold from where it was before, which was only in such a short amount. Exactly. In such a short amount of time, which is like less than a year ago, we're talking about maybe like 10 months. Not even. Like, yeah, well, nine I months. mean, from 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 the end of the NBA or from when they got eliminated to the new season, it was the shortest offseason in NBA history yeah. or in uh, major sports history. Right. Yeah. So for him to be able to improve to this degree and that little time is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Man. Shout out to him. Shout out to Lou Dort, man. Shout out to Ken- the Canada basketball, man. Like, And this just proves how many how great some Canadian players actually are. Not to be a homer or anything, but it's just kind of factual seeing the type of talent that we have with Lou Dort, Chris Boucher, Jamal Murray, all the type of Canada basketball players that we have going on, even Andrew Wiggins now. So, yeah, there's definitely... Lou Dort's been definitely a great, have, having a great season next year, and we expect him to get even better in years to come. 